Yo, this is Horseman here. This is Loop TV. Yeehaw! You know. It's Kat here for Loop TV and we have been lucky enough to be invited into the studio of legendary engineer and producer Mr. Prince Fatty Mike Pelliconi and also joining us here today is reggae legend drummer. If you like your dub reggae you know this man, it's Horseman. First of all, the Prince Fatty thing. Obviously, you started off uh, your career more with the acid jazz flavour. Well, I, I started working in recording studios when I left school, so it was just a um, sort of a one-shot journey into mayhem via different studios and record labels and so on. So um, I had the, the, the misfortune or the fortune to work for acid jazz for a while. Yeah. <laughs> And then it was it was Stussy who originally approached you in sort of 2005. Yeah, for the Prince Fatty thing, what happened was they wanted to, to they had a, a limited edition range of clothing that they wanted to do uh, to celebrate the, the the Jamaican vibe of the 70s, if you like, using the patterns and the colours, and they wanted to release a limited edition version with a record. Uh, they tried to license it off other labels and it didn't quite work out. And a mutual friend said, uh, recommended me to do it, because obviously they, they told them that I knew all the old Jamaican guys and you know, you know, I had the studio and the right equipment, so they knew we could put it together and we did and, and that was it. So we had five minutes to, to, to make the song and 10 minutes to come up with a name and that was it, it was done and dusted. And from there, Survival of the Fattest, which sort of became a bit of a dub super group. Yeah, I mean, that was that was always my dream to put, you know, basically my, my little hit team together, if you like. I've been lucky enough to have worked with a lot of cool Jamaican producers like Mikey Campbell and uh, dub specialists like Agent Sherwood and On New Sound and all those guys. And, uh, and also I was hanging out in Brixton quite a lot in those days. So I was getting to meet, you know, in Brixton you can walk down the road and and see the old the old guys walking around so it's just it kind of just happened organically and uh when i was indulged with the opportunity then i knew who to call you know so of course horseman was my first call you know now you're working with other producers as well josh shaka mad professor as well and doing a lot of session drumming i believe you're djing as well at the moment mm, yeah man well i mean the dj thing was um well, it just slide in. It just just come natural. And I mean, what the drum things have to make sure so I maintain the drums and keep it alive and keep it real. You know? so. Now, I mean, one of the things which is really recognisable about the Prince Fatty sound and, and all of the stuff that you're producing is that real sort of warmth and depth that you get from analog recording equipment. And you've really stayed true to that. What is it about recording on the sort of vintage gear that does it for you? Um, well, it's just it's the real sound. It's unbeatable, as you can see. You know, nothing in here was made before 19. I mean, after 1980. So this is like basically the very best of the analog technology from the end of the 70s and it's what we call Class A and uh, that's not drugs, that's electronics. Most of my stuff has come to the BBC so to all of you that have uh, paid your licence fee, thank you. <laughs> the tape machines here and the ones behind me, they're all the very best Ampex machines and stuff so that's exactly the same machines that the Americans and the Jamaicans used. Now, tell me about the sort of marrying that analog sound in it and um, bringing in sort of the new Pro Tools and all this sort of new technology to that. Does it enhance the sort of production experience for you? Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, I think it's more of a, a of, um, uh, how can I say, like a mentality, if you like, because you can still use digital equipment in an analog way. So um, it's just down to how you capture the sounds and how you record. I've done many recordings with just Pro Tools and people comment on how warm and analog it sounds, so I don't know. It's just, I think it's part of how you record things, in other words, with the ambience and, and the room and picking up the atmosphere, because I think a lot of that comes, comes from that. So um, most people, when, when they record, they record too close, they don't pick up enough of the room and, and the mood. Let's talk about Drum Drops, which is obviously your label and, and Horseman, you're a big part of that, along with some other legends. Tell me about your roster of drummers, first of all. 
Well, um, <coughs> drum drops, my vision for that, because I could see years ago that basically uh, the way that the computers were going and the way that the, 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 the future was, was, was quite obvious to me, that basically everyone would be working with computers and would want to use live drums, and you can't record live drums in your house because you'll get an ASBO these days, you know? So uh, uh, at the end of the day, you've either got to book a studio or try and work with some, some, some people. So part of my thing was to, uh, to allow and introduce people to perhaps where they wouldn't have the opportunity to work with Horseman or, or work with Star Scott or Keith LeBlanc or, or Graham Fox and so on. Actually, via drum drops, they can. So it makes it a lot more accessible to, to people all over the world. And, Tell me about tempo mapping, because that's kind of unique to the Drum Drops label. As the software developed, you could see that the, the Pro Tools, for example, allowed you to, to slave the computer, if you like, to a live performance. So that's what we started doing that years ago, so that basically we could have the live drums that, that ran a complete four-minute performance. But any computerized or, or, or MIDI uh, sections to the song would follow the, the, the drums exactly because as, as literally as each bar is moving, it's following it precisely to the sample. So it's it's not, um, it's basically people that use Pro Tools and edit and work with a lot of live music know, know about it, but often it's overlooked because it's just one of those things, you know? So it allowed us the opportunity to, 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 to put out the beats so that people could use them in, in at home and using all their MIDI equipment and still, still work with it efficiently. Now, for you, Horseman, what's it like actually coming into the studio? Because you pr produce some fearsome sounds on, on that drum kit. Well, boy, I might tell you, it's um, the sound that I'm hearing from this camp, Prince Fatty, is the sound that I've been wanting to work with from a long, long time. And the first time I worked in the camp, and I heard the sound, I said, yes, this is where I'm supposed to be and play the music how it's supposed to play. Make it nice, you know, round, fat, you know, lively, you know, happy, you know, that's what I'm talking about. There's a zillion straight, you know, regular pop beats out there already, so there's no point in us doing that. So we tend to, 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 to focus on the, the personality of the musician and also what, what they do their best at, you know? So it's uh, it's why the jazz the, the jazz stuff that we've been doing with Graham Fox or the reggae stuff with Horseman or the the, the, the hip hop and old funk beats from Keith LeBlanc from the Sugar Hill Gang. I mean, each one of those dramas is is very has a very specific and very strong personality, sound, and genre, and, and that is impossible to recreate. You know. Now the other thing as well is one well, essentially as well once you've bought one of these packs, it's sort of royalty free as long as you sort of you've bought the whole pack and that sort of gives you a great expansive sound that you have that you can use my vision for that as well was basically i could see years ago that that we were earning less and less money that's me and the drummers because basically everyone kept using either samples or, or drum machines or and budgets were being cut down so i always had this vision of trying to set up a, a label for me and the drummers so that we could uh, do our thing and and uh, and uh, and yeah, and eat, you know. We got a massive uh, release of beats next year. Like I said, I got a, we got some surf ones coming out. We're just putting the final touches now to a, a gigantic testament of dub and reggae beats, which is basically going to be pretty much uh, four or five discs. Of, uh, we've split it up in, in eras, so we've got the the, the ska era, the rock steady era, then the early dub, and then the real heavy late 70s, like early 70s. 80s. Mm basically covered every era if you like you know so you've, you've got you've got 10 pretty much 10 tracks 10 drum tracks of various tempos and feels uh, you know split across each each decade so you've, you've got 40 years of reggae beats in there so it's a, it's a lot of trouble for your neighbors guys thank you so much for letting us into the studio we're going to be enjoying some of your sessions very shortly this is cat for loop TV